All right, guys, back at it. Uh, here we go, and we're gonna get this together. So one more ingredient we got here. We gotta go yingling black and tan. And what we're gonna do is to uh, to improve the soil. We're gonna. You gotta be out of your mind. Did you really think I was gonna dump a yingling in there? I'm gonna dump this yingling in me. I had to do it. Anyway, so let's get on with it. We're gonna start out with the mycorrhizal fungi inoculation, and I'm just gonna really lightly, that's more than I wanted right there, just like a little dusting like he is dusting a, like he's dusting a funnel cake the way you're supposed to, not the way, you know, the people with type 75 diabetes do it, just a little bit. Then, this is the charcoal I was talking about, and uh, it's various sizes, and I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit of this out here. And it's uh, some dust and real fine pieces and some bigger pieces too. That won't hurt nothing for sure. Next, this is that Epsoma fertilizer. Now you gotta measure this really precisely. It's like baking a cake. If you don't do it, no, look, see? Just grab a couple handfuls of it. And I'll, you know, when I get off the camera, I'll go on the other side and I'll play with it, but we'll just, I wanted you to just kind of get the feel for what I do here. So I'd probably use about twice that amount if I was using one, but since I'm using two different fertilizers, I'll use about, you know, half of what I normally would. And now this is the Dr. Earth Premium Gold. And again, like, you, you, you know, some people worry way too much, I think, about exactly how much. And you ain't got to be perfectly distributed or nothing. There'd be nothing wrong with going in here with your fingers and mixing this all up. I'm not going to do it because of how much we're doing and the way we're doing it. I'm going to let biology and life take care of it from here. Now, next, I want to go ahead and I'm going to do the leaf duff and natural compost and whatever else is in there and hopefully I won't get bit by a bark scorpion or something I probably should be wearing gloves though I do have to say I I picked it all up with my hands so it's probably safe but we've been finding a lot of these uh, they call them stripe bark and I am gonna have to come around that side now stripe bark scorpions uh, here and there recently they ain't like the death stalkers or nothing like that that are gonna kill you but they will send you to the emergency room they can give some people a pretty nasty reaction. Um, but, we ain't had no problems getting bit with them yet. Dorothy almost stepped on one. All right, so we've got that down. And you can see how, you know, carefully that was done. It had, again, you just don't have to be perfect with stuff, folks. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get out my mushroom spawn. And uh, anything I tell you about this is just me making it up because I've never been successful with it. But I'm just gonna give a nice coating of crumbles of it all around. You know, all that wonderful leaf litter and natural compost. And if I don't get mushrooms out of this bed, you know, next spring, I'm done with mushrooms. This is my last try doing it outside anyway. So this is a five pound brick. I'm probably gonna use maybe a quarter pound of it here. And I'm gonna save a big chunk of it for somewhere else. I'm gonna try something a little different with it. A pure soaked wood chip situation. But there we go with that. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some blood meal. And again, this is a, I'm gonna use my hands even though I don't want to. This is pure nitrogen, basically. Now, I wanted to warn you about something with these organic fertilizers that are made with blood meal, bone meal, feather meal, anything like that. There's nothing toxic about them. Uh, you could eat it. I wouldn't, but you could. This stuff actually makes really good uh, catfish chum, by the way. You take some of it. You know that expensive catfish chum they sell? It's blood meal for your garden. Um, <laughs> you put some of this in a like a minnow bucket and put some rocks in it and sink it down below your boat. It works really good. But the other thing it would be attractive to is your dogs and your cats, your bow wows. 
like this, it's not really a problem other than it might encourage them to dig. So you gotta be aware of that. The, the bigger problem, the risk, that I want you to be aware of, where you store it. If you think about blood meal and bone meal, if when it gets wet, it gets caked up in balls. And if your dogs get into a bag of that stuff and they eat it, it can become impacted and it can be, it can be life threatening. Even though there's nothing toxic about it, it's that they're dogs and they don't think like people. So they're just gonna gorge on it. Wait, that sounds like a fat guy with bacon. Anyway, they're gonna gorge on it. And it's, it, it, and when, if they get enough of it in one shot, it can impact their, their, their bowel or their stomach or even their throat. So please, wherever you store this, store this somewhere, your bow wows can't get to it. So that's all we got going there, that's it. And now we're gonna do the mulch. And I'm probably not gonna sit here and do all the mulch. I'm gonna get some of it and get it started and then we'll wrap up because you'll get bored if I keep doing that. But I'm gonna use this bucket and I'm definitely gonna do the rest of this off camera because it's gonna take a while. I might go get a pitchfork or something to help drain it faster. But you know, as we get it up here, I'm gonna start over here in this corner. I just want to show you. I want to. I want to fill it completely up to the top. Maybe even a little bit over, nice and thick. I know what I need for this, and I'll go get it after we stop filming. I have some buckets with holes drilled in them, and those holes are for uh, making sunflower sprouts. One of those would be perfect. I could just scoop up the mulch with the bucket, and it'll drain. But you know, it's kind of nice having all that extra water go in there. Maybe not in my beard. Get off my beard. Mmm. Fishy. Anyway, um, there you go. We're just going to do the whole bed like that. Now, what I want to address is people say, well, how do I plant seeds then? You pull the mulch back, put your seed down in the hole, leave the mulch pulled back, and when the seedling comes up, push it back around your seedling. It's not hard. By the way, a lot of your bigger you know, plants like squash, beans, etc., just stick them in there. They can push their way through this. If they can push their way through soil, they can push their way through this loosely packed mulch. Now, what should happen in time, and I'll, hopefully I'll be able to show you some videos even in just a couple weeks, we should be able to come out here and we should be able to pull this back and it should just be white hairs everywhere from all of that bacterium, uh, beneficial fungi and things like that, and biological activity going on. Anyway, guys, I got, uh, I got work to do to get this one done and the other one done. Uh, but I know if I didn't show you this, as simple as it is, it would, it would generate a ton of questions. What about this? What about that? Um, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, I got at least four more of these to build and get together. And uh, by the time those other ones are done, these should be looking pretty good. And uh, with that, we'll catch you later. Remember, any questions you have about this process or anything to do with aquaponics or anything to do with backyard gardening, give them to me in the... Uh, the, the comments below and I will do my very best to get them answered if I have four or five questions come in over two or three days every two or three days I'll sit in the back porch in the morning with you before my podcast and get you answers I love helping people uh, and I want to see your projects tell me about the ones you're doing like this and if you want to check out all the cool stuff I do not just talk aquaponics and backyard gardening check out the survival podcast you can get there real easy by going to tspc.co tspc.co all the cool kids are putting it in their phone put it in yours too